so welcome. Uh, so today I'll be talking about uh, Storybook uh, and how we can build a component library. Actually, I won't be, I mean, just, just so you know, it, I won't be building a whole component library, just a small part of the component library because otherwise um, I'll be spending like a couple of months here. So uh, <laughs> the, I'll be up building like a small button so you can get a, a look and feel, an example of how this is gonna work, okay? Uh, so, uh, my name is Ali, um, I'm a tech lead in Verify Media, yes, and uh, let me talk about a little bit about the OTT, the online tech talk, uh, basically it's a space where we can share knowledge, um, and well, whoever wants to uh, volunteer to, to share some knowledge is always welcome, and as, as you already know, we'll be talking about Storybook today. So, uh, first question is, what is Storybook? Uh, and here we have uh, Winnie Pooh thinking about it. So a storybook is an open source tool. Uh, we can build our reusable components just in isolation without having to actually work on a particular page. As you can see in this example, we have a, a list of, uh, of library components that we, have, that we have for this particular application, uh, for this particular application, yeah, application. So uh, what, what, what can we talk about the benefits of using storybooks? So as I already mentioned, we have uh, our components in isolation. Uh, it gives us uh, an idea of all the components that we, already, that we have available. And also uh, we have documentation for, this whole, um, for all these components. And also it gives us, gives us a sense of the style guide provided for, the, for this as well, okay? So uh, let's talk about a little bit about the features that we have with Storybook, yes? So uh, we have Stories, which is basically uh, one of the particular states available for a component. For example, in this particular case, we have a button that has a state of fill. We have another one that's outline. That we have another one that's link. So that's basically, uh, if we look at the other components in this particular scenario, we'll, we'll have other states for, for example, for the checkbox, for a chip, etc. Okay. <clears throat> As regarding to the, the common documentation that I already mentioned before is that basically you will be able to explain what this component does in particular. You'll be also, be, you also have uh, particular examples. As you can see here, you actually have the UI for this particular component called flag, the description of what a flag does and then also, you, if you look at this uh, button here, uh, I don't know if it shows really well, but it says show code. So if you click on show code, it will show this little, uh, this code, piece of code that you have here. You can literally copy paste into your um, application as long as you have the, the, um, the library installed, obviously, uh, just, uh, just so you know. Um, and then you'll be able to actually use the component. It's um, really simple and it's actually, you actually have more documentation below that as regarding to how you can use what each um, property is. I'll, I'll show it in a little bit, little bit more uh, um, detail, detail later on, <clears throat> sorry. As regarding to add-ons, well, these are basically just plugins that we have in Storybook, okay? So for example, uh, here in this particular example, we have the controls, which are basically all the properties that you can uh, mix and match with this, um, uh, with the, with this component, okay? So for example, you have the description, the variant, uh, if you have action buttons, which are different uh, actions that you can do with the buttons that are displayed for this component. Uh, but I, I really want, and also you have, as you can see up top here, uh, you have actions, um, accessibility design, themes. Uh, there are a lot of things that you can actually start adding to the core functionality of uh, Storybook. These are a couple of examples here. Um, I'll, I'll get a little bit more into detail once we get the, uh, the actual uh, page, uh, once I, I show you the actual page. Okay, so uh, what are the tools I, I, I use to create this, the, the live demo today? Uh, well, I use TSDX, which is a, a template for React Storybook. Uh, also includes TypeScript. Um, that's a oversimplification of this tool. It actually brings you Husky, um, how to deploy it. It, it. it basically gives you mostly everything that you need to have a, a working environment. Uh, production environment, sorry. 
So uh, another thing that we'll be using as well, it's style components. It's just for managing styles and themes. It's a, it's a, a, a CSS in JS alternative. Uh, I think you also have Notion as well, as well. Uh, but I, I like style components and it's pretty easy to use as well. As regarding to testing, because I also left an example for testing um, because I see a lot of um, videos online that they have um, the, how to create the library, but it doesn't tell you how to test the library. So um, I made a small example for with React testing library, which is the de facto uh, at this for at least at this time for for testing. Um, so uh, I also provided a theme provider, which is basically an add-on that will allow me to use different themes across the, this this application. Um, it doesn't really make much sense right now, but once you see the actual the live example, um, you you'll you'll understand. Okay. Uh, to here, do we have any questions, or I can just go through? I'm good. No questions. Okay, so um, let's see. So uh, we'll be using a style. We'll be using a style system to that I I just grabbed a random one from the internet, so you can see a, a real case a scenario. Uh, we already have one for verify media, but I won't be showing it because it, I don't think that would be a good idea to show something from, from a client. So uh, I, I grabbed one, a random one uh, from, from Figma. Uh, this is the Figma link that you, you, you have when, once, you, once I uh, share the, 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 the sec. And the repository of the, of the, of the live demo that, that, uh, that I created for today and the actual live demo as well. So, um, let me actually show the demo. So here is a uh, fun time. So um, let's go here. So for example, uh, let me show the style system that I grabbed here, right? So we have a, a, a lot of components as you can see here. I don't know if you, uh, if you guys have used Figma before, but we have a lot of components. So I, I won't be getting into this whole components here. Uh, oh, oh boy. Uh, okay. So, um, I'll be only at, uh, working on, on the bottom component here that we, that we have. So as you can see here in the ar actual architecture of this, of this button, uh, we have the, the main button here, and then we have the different, um, we're gonna call them variants, okay? So it's easier for us to understand. So we have like what's called fill, ghost. I think this is, uh, oh, well, it says here, right? Literally border, borderless, and then the rounded one here. And then we have the uh, the colors, right? We have a primary color, secondary color, neutral color, and we're gonna call those the primary, secondary, and neutral. We're gonna call them colors, okay? So yeah, so we, we are all understanding the same the same jargon here. And then we have the different states, uh, which we basically have um, just a neutral state, then the hover, then the focus, and then the disabled states. Um, you, you, you have the other examples here as well, but um, I actually want to jump right into the example, but just to give you a, a, a general feeling, you have the, the you know, just the, uh, what I just mentioned, right? So um, I grabbed these examples, the first one, which is this color with these variations and the ghost, okay? So I, I, have, I grabbed the primary for with the fill, ghost, and the secondary with the field on the ghost. Okay, those are the two examples that I have. So I'll go ahead and show them to you. Uh, this is, uh, as I already mentioned, Storybook. I already have it uh, working. I have a, an actual uh, website. Uh, so it's deployed by um, GitHub. I'll show, share in the chat if you, wanna, if you wanna test it out. So basically, uh, as you can see here, look, if I hover, I does this, and then if I click on it, it changes color. And if I go out, it goes back to the to the previous color. This is already managed by the by the, the application. So um, so the, as I already mentioned here, we have con controls here, right? So for example, if I want to change the te te uh, the text, I can I can do uh, hello the hello world. Okay, so we also have the sizes variants. Basically, um, here we also have different. I don't, I don't think I, I mentioned that, um, but it's here somewhere. Uh, oh yeah, here we go. So we have the small, the medium, and the large, right? So we have uh, a small, medium, and large. Okay, 
Then we have the colors, which are, are already mentioned, which is we have primary and then we have secondary. So the same thing, right? Hover state, uh, click, uh, click focus, and then uh, click outside. And then the variant that I previously mentioned, which is uh, ghost or fill. Same thing here, if, you, if I change the primary, we'll have the, the fill one as well. So um, we have the disable state here, uh, which it works for fill, ghost, and then obviously for secondary as well, as you can see here. Okay, so uh, another thing to mention here is that, for example, I have an actions uh, add-on here. Well, if I click here, you'll see that, uh, that an event is uh, dispatched. So basically what it's letting you know is that we, it's just making you uh, understand that there's an action going on and this, that the button is clickable, right? Because if it's not clickable, then it's really not a button. So um, next thing that we see here is the themes. So um, in themes here, we have, for example, the list of properties that are um, assigned to, to, um, to this storybook. For example, I have the, the name of this, um, of this theme is called main, and it has all these properties, uh, with like primary, secondary, which are the colors. Right, so um, if I wanted to have another theme, I can create another theme, uh, and I would just click between main and the other theme, and I will be able to to change them. Okay. Uh, any questions so far as regarding to add-ons and what I'm displaying so far? No, no questions. This is cool. Okay, so as regarding to stories, this is the actual story that I have for the button. And what I have here is the, uh, the different states, right? So I have a fill with primary, and then I have a, a second, another story, which is the secondary with ghost. And, um, and as you can see here, I can actually change this and go back to the other state, right? Which is primary, but the, just for, just for testing purposes, you 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 know for for easy for ease of use, uh, you're you're able to just switch between one and the other and see the different states, the states that are relevant to you uh, as a developer or as the product or for product side, and you don't have to actually uh, be switching between this and this to see what what you have, right? So uh, the next thing that we have here is the docs. So the docs here, as you can see. Uh, I, I created those these two stories that will actually show them here. So once again, once again, if you click on show code, you'll be able to copy this and copy paste. The only thing that you need to change, obviously, uh, I mean, this is pretty obvious. You need to change the on-click, right? This, this doesn't exist. Um, so, um, but that's it. So um, uh, same thing here, you can, for, for this other, a scenario you have it you have it as well and then another thing that we have here that i already mentioned to you but i, I was not able to show it on the on the on the slide because well it, it was a lot of data um is the the descriptions of the properties that, that we have here so for example uh for this uh for this button here as i already mentioned we have the sizes right so we, we have these three options that is letting you know what, what is actually the default value? So the default value is the, the large, the primary, the fill. So, uh, sorry, the, it's for the large for this one, the, for the color is primary, and for the second one is fill. So, um, so yeah, so that's what we have so far here for the, 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 for the docs in this case. There are the other buttons here. You can, uh, you know, you can make it dark, you can make it light. It's not working on mine because, well, um, I think I have this plugin enabled here that um, makes makes it like this. But yeah, sorry, <laughs> it's my plugin that that's actually messing up. And uh, we have other things here as well, but they're not really relevant. You can actually play them uh, once you have once you have start have the the working uh, environment on your own. Right. I'll leave it. I'll leave it up to you. We also have some three dots here. You can actually uh, remove the add-ons. You, you can actually uh, tweak tweak this as you need, as you fit. See fit. You can go full screen. Uh, you can press escape to go out of full screen, etc. So um, and so, if you don't have any questions, I can just go ahead and go to the code, code the code part. I have a 
question, but I may ask just at the end is, is there, do you usually mock API requests? Like if you went to interact with a, a backend for asynchronous responses, so on and so forth, can this be done in Storybook? I mean, you could do basically anything that you want on Storybook, but uh, the, the thing is that it really doesn't make much sense sense to to actually mock that in, in this uh, particular um, environment because the idea here is to make everything in isolation uh, mm -hmm. of everything else. So this is so it's just Storybook on its own, basically, or at least that's the general idea. I mean, you, you, can, you can change it as you see fit, but uh, in my personal opinion is that uh, th this should just be in isolation on its own world and try to be it as, a, as agnostic as possible for, for, uh, for the application. Okay. So then, th so th those things can actually be done on the application where you actually use this, this buttons, right? Or, or the, the components that you're using. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. So uh, no, no problem. So let me go ahead and, and share um what the repository looks like so uh as already mentioned i created this with um tsdx and the tsdx all, basically almost creates everything for me it basically creates the source the stories uh inst installs everything the, the it already installs typescript as well with the tsconfig.json um and well basically does everything for me what it doesn't do for me is create this this um this uh, schema that I just created, right? So I created this uh, library, this um, folder called components. I also created another folder called theme. Um, and I'll go ahead and, and one, one in one so you can understand what's going on, okay? So uh, the first thing, thing that I need to do is do, um, it's, it, once I'm inside the folder, uh, I do join start, which is basically going to do is to kind of watch for changes in my uh, in my in my uh, source directory. So uh, next thing, once I have compiled successfully, I can go ahead and run in another terminal, yarn storybook, which is gonna run storybook locally. Okay, let me just wait. It takes a, a little bit of time. Um, well, actually, it takes a long time. Uh, so um, if uh, it's using Webpack, I think with a beat option, it will run a little bit faster, but uh, Webpack it does just fine, um, at least for now. So um, I, I have it running on localhost 6006, so it opens here. Uh, you can see the same thing that I mentioned to you on, on the live demo, okay? So uh, things that we can see here. The first thing that I'll, I'll go ahead and mention is this uh, module that DTS. So it's basically just an extension for style components for, for just TypeScript. It, it lets me know what, what type of information my theme manages. So what is a theme, right? So I just started talking about this and I started talking about a theme and what, what are you talking about? So I'll go here to this theme. And first thing we do here is just the index, right? Um, I, this is just the, the general index that we have for JavaScript in general, just to export it and to import it in an easier way, but that's just that's just it, uh, not, nothing too fancy here. So let me actually go to the actual theme, right? So this theme here that we have here uh, has all these properties that are going to be used throughout the whole application, right? Um, now, um, just to give you a general sense, what, for a production application, I don't know if this is the best way to structure theme. What I'll probably do is grab the colors and put the whole palette of colors available for, for available in theme. But for, for once again, for simplicity's sake uh, of this demo, I made it in this particular way, so it's easier for me to manage, right? So I have this color object, and then I have two variants, which well, two colors uh, options, which is primary and secondary. As I already mentioned to you, have neutral, hover, active, disable, and same thing here. And the power here comes with TypeScript. So I'm able to describe how this theme is gonna look like. So for example, I have this theme props, right? This type, and I mentioned here what the color is and the primary is gonna, and secondary are gonna manage the color state object. So what is this gonna have? The neutral, which is type of string, the active, et cetera, et cetera. 
So if I need to add a, a third one, what I would need to, I would just need to do, uh, I don't know, third. Oh, well, we had a neutral one, right? Uh, which is color state. And then I will need to add it here. And see, you, it's throwing you an error already. So you already know, uh, same thing if you did it the other way around, uh, neutral, it will, it will throw an error as well because you haven't defined it in the type. So it goes hand in hand, right? Uh, I, I don't, I won't go and do that because otherwise I have to uh, make some modifications on the bottom, but uh, with that, it should be sufficient. So basically what uh, this theme here is the object that will be used throughout the whole application for, um, for so that so this can be reused in different components. And as regarding to this definition here, it lets me know what properties uh, are being used in this theme, okay? So it will be for the for intelli, IntelliSense, it will be fa faster. So if I type theme, it will let me know what properties I have. It will know theme, color, primary, uh, and then the other options that I have. If I don't do that, then I don't know what, what properties are in theme, okay? This is particular of style components, but just to let you know. Um, so far, so good. Anyone with any questions? Oh, you're good. Okay, I, I'll, I'll manage the silence as a, as a silent guest. So um, next thing that I'll look into, it, it will be the components, okay? So I, if you see the, uh, here we have a lot, a lot of, of files, just for a simple component. But um, the, the idea here is to, to try to uh, keep it organized. So for example, we have the index, which is once again, just a general index file that exports the, the, the actual component. Um, down here, do we have the, uh, the actual good stuff here? So we have the button here, and then this uh, button extends, uh, is importing a style button from styles. So I'll look into it in, a, in just a sec, but just to give you uh, an idea of what's, what's happening here is I'm passing the on click, the, the, the status of the save, the, the, the disable the status, the what type of color, the size, and the variant. And this uh, particular um, style component will manage all the styling that needs to be done and all the logic uh, for this. And obviously here as well, um, I'm defining the, the default values that will be used uh, if, if I don't pass anything to this, to this particular component. Um, then obviously I do the, the default uh, export here. So let me go first with the type definitions for this. So the type definitions is in the same folder with as, as file, types TS. Basically here, I have all the definitions of all the options that I have. So for example, for size, I, I uh, presented three types, which is small, large, medium, colors, and things primary, secondary, and for variants, build, and goals. Uh, then for the color states, it's the same thing here. I met, I, I type the default, the, the different states that I have for this, for this particular button. And then in the actual um, button props, which is what I'm actually using here, is uh, I started, if I leave these comments, these comments will actually go in, in a storybook, just, just so, you, so you see. Um, uh, actually, oh, wait, no, sorry, my bad. So uh, <laughs> this is a, in the other application that I had, sorry. So, but it's a general, general, general sense, uh, good idea to have this uh, commented and let everyone know what's, what's going on with, with the each, uh, each of the properties. Um, you'll be able to see them anyways um, in the uh, IntelliSense. And also, as you can see here, I have all the definitions as well. Uh, okay, so that's are the, the types that we have for the button. And then let me go ahead and go to the definition of the actual style component. So if I go to the style here, you'll see that I have this um, style uh, components uses a, 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 like a dot definition for, for, the, for describing a different type of um, HTML elements that you want. So for example, if I wanted to make a div, I could just do this, but this is really a button that I need. And I make this uh, this definition here, so just to let uh, just so we know what type of, of uh, properties this this component is going to use. So, for example, if I do here uh, icon of type string, uh, place it 
here, you will see that here, it, now it's expecting, uh, it's, it says overload, blah, 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 blah. But, uh, but the general idea here is that property icon is missing in type. So it, it, it's easy for me to actually debug and if I forget to add anything, it will, it will scream at me. Good old TypeScript. So uh, here we actually, here's all the logic that comes with the actual button itself. So um, for example, let's look at the padding. As you can see here, um, I'm actually passing this props, right? To this component and actually actually destructure it. So this actually what happens, it, this comes as props, but I'm actually destructuring and getting the size here. Once I pass the size and get the size, the actual size here, you see here, like um, I see the, I uh, actually do a switch case and I see, okay, so if you pass me large, medium and small, I'll tell you what the padding size will be for this, uh, for this component. Uh, so regarding to the default, you see that unreachable error. So what is this thing that I have here? So uh, this is a real weird definition that we have, which is called never uh, and the message here. So what's going on here? So for example, um, what I'm letting you know, for example, if I add another case scenario, let's, if I, no, actually, if I, let's say I remove this case scenario, I forgot to add it. As you can see, uh, it will throw me an error. It says that it's receiving a string or type small, right? Because I didn't cover the case scenario of small. So it's letting you know that you need to cover that scenario. Otherwise, it will throw you an error. It will let you know, hey, you're missing something here. So also uh, another thing that it covers you is for example, if I pass anything else from aside from this, this three cases, it's gonna throw you an error and gonna say, hey, you're, you got an unexpected size for the button component. So it, once again, it, it, it lets you know every, in either way that you're, you're missing something, right? So um, uh, that's for the size. Um, then we have the border radius. Well, it's just general, uh, uh, stuff that we have for this button. And then the last but not least is the get variant. So this is a little bit more complicated. Um, so first thing I do is you see the colors stay here. So first thing is I need to get the colors um, for the for the get variant, first of all. So I pass it the theme and the color. So with this theme, I'm able to get the theme, the type of color, and then what, what I need. Right, so we have three type of two types of colors. I have primary and secondary. And TypeScript knows that uh, actually knows that this oh, this can only be two options. So because of the of the way that the theme is is described, right? So you can only have primary and secondary. So so everything go, falls into place and, and just works well. And then you can get the neutral, the hover, the active, and the disable. So I have all these four colors in this uh, object that I return, which I will later use in the here and, and actually change the, the different colors, right? So if I change the background color, I use, for example, if I have a field state, I know that the background color, let me look at the field state. So uh, I will know that the background color is what the primary color is, right? So the, the background color is primary. When I hover it, it's gonna be the hover color when I click on focus, it's gonna be the focus color. And then when I put disable, it's gonna be the disable color, but for always for the background, right? So the color, the, the font color is white. And then what changes is the background depending on the state. So if it's just the default state, we'll leave it default. If it's hover, we'll change it. If it's focus, we change it. I know it's, I'm repeating myself here, but just so everyone uh, get, gets the idea, right? So if you have a disable, once again, we have a disable. Now this is for fill. Now what happens if I have a ghost, right? So th this is a little bit different. Now, if we look at this example, now the background color is white, but what changes is the border and the actual text. So here I, I, I actually change the text color to default and then the border to default as well. So I then I have to do those changes for each other state that I have, right? So for hover, for focus, and for disable. Now, once again, if I miss a variant or if I put a variant that's that's not listed, I'll get an unexpected variant error for, for here. 
once again, it will let you know that you're missing something, okay? Ooh, that's a lot. Uh, <laughs> any questions here so far <laughs> as regarding to the, how, this, how this is working? No questions. Okay. So uh, let me go ahead and talk about how they, how we are exporting this. Okay. So um, in the in the source file, I have an index uh, TS where I will export all my components. Once again, I will export all my components. Since I only have one component, I will only export one. But if I have more, then I'll have like a, a wait, sorry, I'll have a a list of this like this, but with different components, obviously, right? So uh, this, all the components that you export here are gonna be exported to the library. So that's all the ones that you're gonna be used. If you don't export it in the index.ts, you will not be, be able to use it in the library, just so you know, okay? Um, and then the, we have a, well, this U, this is what I am already mentioned on the reachable error, not, nothing too bad here. So let me show you how you, actually make the, uh, the, the story work. So the story works thanks to MDX. You can actually use TSX, TS, uh, other type of uh, extensions. If you look at, we have, we have a, a configuration file called that storybook where you can see the extensions that are available for the stories. And actually, if you wanna change the, where the, where um, how the name of the folder is called and the, uh, and as I already mentioned the extensions that it provides, you can change it here. Okay, and then as regarding to add-ons, you can actually add more add-ons if as you need. For example, in this case, I added the add-on the add-on theme provided storybook, uh, which is the different themes that I already mentioned to you. Okay, uh, but I'll go back to themes in just one second. So um, so here we have. We have to import a couple of things. This is kind of like a boilerplate kind of thing because this is just how Storybook is telling you how you have to use it, right? So basically you need to tell it, you need to pass the meta, the, the meta, which is the title that will, of the description of the component and what the actual component you're gonna be use it, using. As regarding to the template, as you can see here, I have arcs and then just to spread this arcs. Basically what the, this is, this will be used is for the different props that will be able to pass down on the on the uh, on the um, on the controls, right? So if I don't do that, I won't be able to manage and control this. So what about the default value that I that I have assigned here? So in order to assign those default values, you actually have to create a canvas, create this story, and then pass the template, and then do this fine here that you have here. And then you pass the props, which is arcs. And here you can actually start passing all the values that you need to define for this particular story. For example, for field primary, I listed this type of properties. For secondary, for the go secondary, I listed this type of properties. Now, this is a lot of boilerplate, and I know it's a lot of boilerplate, but this is how a Storybook actually manages this type of, this type of things. So, um, it's more like remembering anything else and having an example and then just follow that example, right? Um, because it's not complicated. We just have to literally copy paste um, and, and, and just exchange what needs to be exchanged. For example, if it's a different component, I'll change this basically all in the spots, right? The button, the button component, the, I'll change it to uh, uh, flag, 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 and then change it everywhere else that I need. So, um, this, since this is MDX, I'm actually able to use headers, et cetera, or different type of, um, of things here. For example, if I change this, you will see it, uh, you will see it different. See, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's smaller and now it's bigger, okay? So uh, I'm able to do everything that's uh, for, mark, for markup. I'll be able to do it here. For example, I'm actually able to write just text, plain text here, and this will display uh, this will display here as well under the documentation, see? And I can actually add more text and, mo and, and modify this documentation as I see fit. So it gives you a lot of liberty. And as the last thing here as arcs table is, is just basically this table that you see here. So you can list what the uh, props uh, are, are and what they receive, 
okay? Just for, just so you the, the documentation, it's not just available for developers, it can be seen by, by product as well. It, 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 would, it, it brings a lot of value to, to, to everyone, basically. Um, let's see, oh, a last, a last thing that I wanted to mention is that, for example, um, as, as regarding to stories, at least, um, we have these themes here, right? So this is added in this preview that JS, which is basically, as I already mentioned, that storybook has uh, is the configuration file for this. And this is where I set up my add-on. I bring out this themes provider and then just pass the themes that I need to use, right? So I this is an array and, and then I pass uh, with an object, that's the name of the theme and then all the properties that we'll be using for this theme. So for example, if I wanted to add a second theme, I can, I can copy this actually and make it um, second. And this will be updated here. And then I can choose, um, let me actually, um, let me get out of, uh, get out of uh, what I actually had intended in mind and actually make it a, a different example for the theme. So for example, let's say that I have a, another type of theme for other, another type of user. So let's create, um, uh, I'll make another second theme. Theme two, uh, I'll make it, I'll make it uh, an export just so, so you, you're able to see it. Um, and I'll just change the colors, right? Uh, I'll make this red, blue, I don't know, orange. <laughs> Uh, I hope this works. <laughs> so, uh, green. So um, let me grab it from here. So um, I'm pretty sure it's theme. Oh no, theme props here. Oh wait, I'm not uh, exporting it. Just give me one second. Uh, from types and then I'll export, export uh, theme two. Uh, I should be able to see it now. There we go. And then I'll spread theme two. Uh, let's see if this works. So, see, I'm able to change between themes, basically. If I have more themes, well, this is because I clicked on it, right? Um, I will be able to, to diff use different themes. Um, and that's a really nice uh, scenario. I mean, uh, if you have a dark theme or uh, you can say, I can have a light theme and then another dark theme and I can actually visualize them and see them on Storybook as well. So um, the last thing that I will be showing um, will be the test. So um, let's see. So we have this um, React Test and Library, which uh, I'm using to test this component. Just so you know, because I need to, this components use a, a theme, I need to pass a th the theme so they can, they, can, they, can, they know what to use, right? So they can be rendered. So I need to wrap the, the, the component with a theme provider and pass a theme. This is really particular style components. That's, that's uh, the only reason why I'm doing this like this, okay? Um, then I'm also providing another thing, which is render screen of fire events. So basically um, what happens is that React Testing Library renders this, renders this um, on, a, on a node environment. Um, and basically creates these components and then it, it does the testing there, right? So it does a, like a fake DOM on node. So that's why we have to do a render, right? Quotes on that. Um, and then I, once I have this render, I'll be able to uh, use like a screen, like a face, fake screen that uh, te React Testing Library provides. And I get the I get the element by the role because this is the button. It's really easy to to grab it because it's just uh, once again I'm testing it in isolation. So it, the the only thing that exists inside that DOM is just this button. So I grab the button and then I I just use chest just to make sure that the text content inside that button is uh, hola, right? But just to make sure that the text is rendered correctly because otherwise if I don't show any text it will look, it will be a really weird part of it, right? So this is the, the first um, test that I write here. It just makes sure that it displays the text. 
The next one is for uh, the unclick event. Just make sure that the button is clicked, right? Because otherwise, if I don't click it, it doesn't um, show any, uh, doesn't uh, execute something. It, it's not really a button. So <clears throat> I just grab a, a fake um, function for just, and they just pass it to this button. And then um, basically what I grab the component once again by the role, and then I do a fake click uh, through the DOM and then just make sure that this this uh, this this function that's that's grabbed by by that created by Jess, it has been executed at least uh, well it has been executed one time right because it, it was clicked once. Uh, so um, before I start talking about deployment, uh, do you have any questions? I know I talked a lot about on this on this one. Sorry. Um, so let me go through about deployment. So how do we deploy this? Uh, so here we have this package JSON. So if you, if I want to build the application, uh, so I can actually use the library somewhere else, I do uh, npm run build, and it will actually build the the application. Now, if I want to build the the page, the storybook page, which is what you see here. Right, because this is this I won't, I won't, this this is just for visual. Uh, you have to run what's called npm run build storybook, and that's gonna build the whole um, the whole storybook page, so you can you can actually uh, view it. Um, so that's basically I, I won't be running those commands because that that um, it's gonna take a long time. Plus, you, you already know what they what they do. Uh, it creates a, this file for 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 um for the build of the library and then the other one creates um it doesn't create um a docs but it creates this folder with all this data here that you see but it, i just renamed it so you can see it on github and it's easy for you to test um so um do you have any questions before um before i end this i'm good i mean this is Super, super helpful. I'm good on my part. Thank you, Ali. No problem. Yes, uh, it's, it's very interesting. I have a question, Ali. Sure. Um, how the, the so if I get the idea right, uh, <clears throat> this is something you show the client to uh, present how the application will will look, right? So how how do you finally use the theme that the client uh, choose, for example? That's a great, great, great question. Okay, so we have this theme here, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, as you see here, I'm exporting this button right here, sorry. So for example, this theme is gonna be used throughout different applications later on. So I will, what, in my particular case, what I will do is, I will, I will export the theme as well. And whatever application that then whatever application you you want to use later on, we'll be able to just import the theme, import the button, use them together, and you will have the uh, you will be able to use those whole things in conjunction. Now, for example, if you have another theme, then we can say we can export this theme as uh, a second theme as well. Um, yeah, there are different ways that you can do, that you can go around this. Um, you can actually create the theme on the actual application. This is not the actual application, right? This is isolation. You can actually create the theme in an, in the actual application with this with this same properties, like as you see here. Like I mean, it just has to follow this this uh, this particular schema, right? So if it fo as long as it follows that particular schema, you can put whatever color, you can put whatever you want, and it will work. And it will work. And just make sure that you use style components, right? Because this is, this is all also all all of, all of it is based on style components. But yeah, you, you you can use it in the actual application. You can export it from here. The, you, there's so many ways that you can go around that. But that that's a great question. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Uh, any other questions? Okay. So um, I think that that's a wrap. And uh, I, I thank you. I thank you for your time. No, Ali, thank you very thank much. You, Ali. Super informative, super helpful. Oh, thank you.
I hope you have a great one. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Have a nice weekend. Bye, guys. Bye.